We are on day five of the Empower, Ignite, and Soar Character Summit. My name is Maria Desmondi. I'm a children's book author, and I'm the host of the summit. And today we have a speech and language pathologist, Becca. I call you Becca, but you're yeah, Rebecca right. Eisenberg. <laughs> Rebecca <laughs> Eisenberg, yeah. who is also an author and someone that I have been working with, which has been really exciting. So welcome, Becca. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and tell us a little bit more about what you do. And um, I know you have a, a very diverse uh, background as far as speech and language, but currently what are you doing for speech and language? Uh, well, I've been working for about 18 years with children and adults with complex communication needs. So I work with children and adults who can't use speech for communication. Okay. And you have so been in private like private settings, but right now you're in the public school settings, correct? Yeah, mostly schools and clinic. I've been in all different preschools, um, so all different settings. Very the cool. time that I've been working. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we've actually learned in the summit, we had an educator who has been teaching for, I think, like she said, 31 years, and we also had um, – uh, an author who created the intentional bookshelf, which bookshelf, which is, um, you know, just bringing in your values into the books that you read. So both of those speakers talked about the importance of literacy and talked about the importance that literacy brings language into your home. And um, just based on your background, I'm so excited for our talk today because you're going to talk about the importance of how parents can be helping their children to develop language with simple activities that we add to our daily routines, right? Exactly. So that's why, because I know we're all busy and we have very busy schedules. So what I really want to talk about today was how can we fit in literacy and language into a routine that's already established? So you don't Fantastic. have to develop a new routine. You could, you know, just kind of fit it right in there. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And I'm going to have you get started, but beforehand, I'm just going to share a short story on um, so in the car, I, we're a big music family, and typically in the car, we don't listen to music because the kids are talking, and it's a good time for conversation. But the other day, I was tired, and I just wanted to, like, jam to some tunes. And my son, who's four, said, Mama, turn off the music. Let's have a conversation. This is what my four-year-old said. <laughs> and to me, it's very normal because we're just he's my buddy and we talk a lot and we're always, you know, discussing things. But then we had his parent teacher conference and I was so, so excited to hear that he is a conversationalist and he can hold conversations and use eye contact with his teachers. And I thought, yay, buddy, because I know in order for our kids to be able to talk to adults, we, they need to be talked to. So aha moment for me, that was awesome. And after a whole week of doing interviews, I'm, I wanted to share a positive story because after some of these interviews, I'm like, I need to work on my parenting. <laughs> it's been eye opening. So Becca, this is going to be enhancing your talk. Talk to us about facilitating language in the home. And actually, when you're talking about conversation, that is one of the things when you're having when you're sitting, you're having dinner. Sometimes it's hard, especially I think as the kids get older, to facilitate the conversation when you say, well, how is school? And they just say, good, and you're trying to expand on it. Um, and so that's why I like to use books during mealtime because I think sometimes, at least like in my situation, and we always read during mealtime, is that you know sometimes the conversation doesn't go as far as I want it to go. So when I'm reading a book, a lot of times I'll try to like pick a book that's relevant to maybe what's going on with my kids or what's going on with me or it's going on to the topic that I want to discuss with them. And then it will start a conversation that we might have not had without the book. So, um, so, and I started reading during mealtime when my, when my, I have two children when they were very little, I would say when they were maybe like six months, I mean, since they were babies, I started. So what does um, the logistics of it look like? Like, okay, they have their, you know, let's say they're two and four, they're sitting down for breakfast, yeah. they have mm -hmm. their breakfast in front of you, you sit down, and you have a story. Exactly, exactly. And I started it because I found that it was hard for, let's say, my kids to sit down and to focus and to eat. And they were just constantly distracted. So I said, okay, well, everyone's already sitting. This is a good time to get some of reading done. And I love to read books. Um, so I just started and I noticed that, you know, my kids were eating better because they were focused on the mm -hmm. book. Um, and I just, it was a great time for us to bond. 
and to, and as a speech pathologist, I just love to, you know, talk about language and to, you know, I love children's books. So it was just a great way for all of us to be able to bond together. And, you know, and we, and it's really become a routine in our house that every time we sit down for dinner, it's, we have a kind of a stack of books. Um, and, and usually a lot of times I'll let my kids choose which books they want to read. So sometimes if they're bringing a book from the library, then maybe we'll read that book. Um, or maybe I have a new book that I want to read and I always give them a choice because I think that's a big thing is that we want to give, as far as motivation to read, we want to read stories that are interesting and that I think, and sometimes that are relevant to what's going on in their lives. So I know it's hard because people have children that are different ages. And so what I'll do is I'll, let's say I'll read the book, but I might modify it according to the age. So I might ask, let's say my younger child, more simple questions, but I might ask my older child more like reflection questions that let's say should do more in school and, you know, more, you know, so it's, so I think it's a trial and error type thing that you have to, that as you're reading, you're going to have to, and I'll talk today a little bit about some strategies to use. That's wonderful. And you know, what comes up when I'm listening to you is the fact that just a few years ago, um, I mean, our dinner time, because I'm really big on everyone sitting down for dinner, our dinner time would last like six minutes. <laughs> yeah. <I laughs> because know, having, a, yeah. having a two year old, it's like he eats something, and then he's like trying to run around and I sit back down, you know, and he's like, I'm done. And I can see how this would really set a different mood for the family and how it could go from six minutes to maybe 15 minutes. Exactly. Exactly. And, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll say, okay, they'll say I'm done. And I'll be like, well, you know, actually I didn't finish my book yet. So we need to finish the book and then we, then we're done with our dinner. And a lot of times they'll eat more because they're mm -hmm. just, they're, you know, a lot of times with kids, they just say they're done when they're probably a little bit more hungry. So they tend to eat a little bit more and then we have an extended dinner time. And one of the things I know people like people have asked me, well, how do you eat when you're reading? Um, and so I know logistically, <laughs> you know, it might be challenging, but a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, let's say I'll eat first or I'll eat a little bit and then I'll read some of the story and then maybe I'll eat a little bit more. Or sometimes I kind take of a pause, I take a pause or if you have a challenge with that, as far as like reading and eating at the same time, cause we don't really want to do that is that you could also start with snack time. You know, okay. we're having a small snack or you could, a lot of times I read during breakfast time. Cause I know in different households, you may eat breakfast at different times, depending on, I don't, I, I eat lunch and dinner with the kids, but hardly ever breakfast because it's such a busy morning. I mean, between making lunches and exactly. getting everyone's exactly making sure they're getting ready. So I love the idea of starting small with a snack time throughout, you know, as the kids are younger, and then you could incorporate it into a, a larger meal like dinner. So let's move on and talk a little bit about expanding vocabulary. How can we do that by reading with our kids? Okay. So, I mean, as you're, as you're reading, as you're reading the book, one of the things that I think to really think about is what words does my child understand? So a lot of times they can kind of guess within the context of what that word means. So we don't want to like read the story and then it become distracting where you're constantly defining words. But, um, but what you want to think about are what words are most important in the story. And those are the words that you really want to focus on and define. So a lot of times, let's say during, let's say when you're reading, we don't want to constantly ask tons and tons of questions. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll be reading a story and we'll say a word and then I'll say, okay, this word means, and then I'll define it and I'll just keep reading. Oh, um, and other times you could say, you know, you can even open up a, a conversation where it's a little maybe more abstract where you can say, well, what do you think that means? Or, and... So a lot of times I think when we're talking to, to children or young children, or even children with like speech and language um, disabilities or delays, sometimes we assume that they know what the words are, but a lot of times they don't. So, and that could also affect their comprehension of the story if they don't really know what the word is. So, and another thing is also repeated readings. So when you're, if you're repeating a story, you know, you read it once and I know kids like, to hear stories over and over again. <laughs> so Isn't a lot that of the time, truth? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times, you know, you read the story and then maybe the second time getting, encouraging your kids to say, well, what, what does that word mean? Because a lot of times we just assume it. So, um, so 
I also, I also do that. And one of the big things too, is to use the vocabulary outside of the story or try to relate the vocabulary word to something that's going on with them. So okay. that's what I'll do instead of like, let's say, you know, they don't understand the definition. I'll, I'll use it in a way that they could understand. Okay. So, that's yeah. excellent. This is great. And let's talk a little bit about, um, so you're having these read alouds and the children are bringing in language. They're learning new words. They're um, having conversations with you that may have been shut down by just the simple question of what did you do at school today? So okay. they're having more fruitful and engaging conversations with you. How can we now empower the children through the throughout those um, read alouds? Well, I think that there's just, I mean, I, I, you know, the books that say that you write are very empowering. Ooh, um, and you. <laughs> and, but like, so using books that I think to me, it's like always about, you know, choosing a topic that you want to discuss that will relate to something in school. So let's say, um, I don't know if you're, if something, let's say someone's bothering them in school. Okay. And they're getting, let's say if it's bullied or they're getting teased, I might, you know, say read a book about, let's say that character getting teased and what do they do or how do they feel? Um, and I think it's also just also about developing empathy because a lot of times kids have trouble expressing their feelings and they don't, mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot of children also with like any sort of speech and language delays or, um, issues with communication is that they don't really have the words to really express how they feel. So they can't, a lot of times kids just can't express when they're sad or when they're frustrated or, you know, they're feeling lonely because they just don't have the words for it. Um, so a lot of times I just use books to really work on that and I'll label that feeling. So let's say in like the book, like the invisible boy, you know, where he, mm -hmm. he, he feels, like Trudy Ludwig, right? yeah, Trudy Ludwig. yeah. And, and that, but you know, he feels, he feels lonely, you know, and he feels left out. And then as the story progresses, he feels more included and he feels happier because of that. So there's a lot of language and there's a lot of different things you could discuss. So that's just one example. But, you know, a lot of times, like let's say for my daughter, I'll use um, the good night. I had it written down over here. Um, the good night stories for the rebel girls. I think that's what it's called. Oh, I, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, and she's older, so she's, she's almost 10. And so that was really cool. Cause I think she really liked hearing about these empowering women that were doing these, all these different things. Um, and I, I just think, you know, it depends on what you're angling or how you want to empower your child. Do you want to empower your child to, you know, to stand up for themselves and to be able to, um, let's say if they're teased, maybe using books like, like you, you know, like, like you write, um, or is it maybe that, you know, they want to be some, they want to be a certain profession. They want to be a doctor. Yeah. And, and, you're an you know, so, yeah. So maybe reading about, let's say somebody who did that, or maybe somebody presents with a, a certain disability and we're going to read a book about that, about a character with that disability and how they overcame it. So I, I think it just kind of depends on, you know, more individual because everyone has different goals and different aspirations and things that they're working on. So fantastic. This is great. And as we wrap things up today in the next few minutes, you actually have something, um, a freebie for our live viewers. Anyone who is tuning in within the first 24 hours, there will be a link in the comments below. Um, tell us a little bit about it. It is the Mealtime Conversation Starter Cards. I think this is probably one of my favorite giveaways. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah, I mean, it kind of brings up what you were talking about with dinner, is that a lot of times, even when I'm sitting down for dinner and say, how was school? Good. Uh, okay. So who do you play with at recess? You know, those kind of questions. So, although that is one of the questions on there, but a lot of times we just need ideas because we're busy and we're tired and if we're making dinner, we're cleaning up. Sometimes it's just nice to have, you know, cards on the table where you could just, and you could participate. They could choose a card. They could maybe in, instead of you asking them, if you have more than one child, that child could ask, let's say their sibling a question. Um, Fantastic. So you just go to the link below, you click on it, put your email in and you'll get, is it a PDF? And then you can print out the cards, yes, right? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I, I think that's yeah. helpful. Yeah. And it could also work on, um, as far as like literacy goes, you want to work on, let's say your child's reading. So maybe they could, them even reading the cards and asking other, other yeah, you know, they're still a question could also yeah. be helpful. Mm -hmm. And I do want to bring up one more point. Um, 
So talking about these empowering books and books that teach, I know the importance of a real book. I love having real books. However, I don't, I, I think that our homes need to have some real books in them, but for the purpose of what you're talking about, maybe a mealtime book um, or snack time book, check out YouTube because I, I've written nine children's books. And what I've done is I have met so many children at the schools I go to and kids will come up to me and say, Miss Maria, my mom wouldn't buy me a book. And in my head, I'm like, I get it. Like it's financially, not everybody can buy a $10 book. So mm -hmm. what I started doing was reading my books and offering them for free on YouTube. So the kids can see the pages being turned. They can hear the story and it's me. It's me. I'm the one providing it. I'm giving that away to people. So I think now here's the, 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 the illegal part is there are some people who actually read other people's books. And I don't think that that's really, um, I think that's like, not really cool, but if yeah. you search on YouTube, a lot of times authors or other people will read books and you can have free access to that. That's my point of this. You, let's say your child is, maybe somebody's new coming to your child's classroom and they have a special need and you really want to like give your child a little bit of an insight as to what it means to be friends with a special needs child and that they're, they're just like anyone else and what you can do for them. Pull up a book on YouTube. You don't need to run out to the library. I know everybody is so busy um, and see if you can find a book there. So that's a nice option. No, I like that. And also, you know, maybe it's like we're talking about the logistics of eating. That would be a good time for you to eat. And then you would you would play the, the book on YouTube. And then when the book is over, that's the time to discuss the book. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I just think to, in today's digital world, uh, there's no excuses families. <laughs> there are no excuses. There is. There are resources that are out there for us that are free. And now um, Rebecca has given us a way to incorporate reading that is not at, in the nighttime when you're falling asleep, at nine o'clock putting them to sleep or what have you. You've given us a really great way to incorporate that language and that literacy into meals. So thank you for coming on today. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Me. You are welcome. Okay. All okay. right. Signing off. Okay. Bye. Still going. Oh, okay.